Do you sometimes notice a dip in your mood, energy, or motivation after masturbating and wonder if it's something to be concerned about? I'm Dr. Laura Stone. Let's start with what happens during orgasm. Whether it's through partnered intimacy or masturbation, the moment of climax sets off a cascade of chemical changes in the brain and body. For a few moments, dopamine surges. But almost immediately afterward, another hormone rises sharply, prolactin. Prolactin is best known for its role in reproduction and recovery. After orgasm, levels of this hormone rise quickly and stay elevated for up to an hour, sometimes longer. It's a natural part of the body's way of signaling the end of sexual activity and beginning a reset. But here's where it gets interesting. Prolactin doesn't just signal recovery, it also suppresses dopamine, which is responsible for feelings of drive, pleasure, and alertness. This shift can lead to a kind of emotional come down, one that feels like tiredness, apathy, or even sadness. And in older men, this drop may feel more noticeable because with age, the body's ability to restore chemical balance becomes slower. So the post-orgasm low can feel deeper or last longer than it did in younger years. This may explain why some men feel emotionally flat after self-pleasure, even if nothing in their life or relationship has changed. It's not weakness. It's not something to be embarrassed about. It's a shift in neurochemistry and one that your body is working through naturally. Still, there's more to the picture. For some men, this post-orgasm dip goes beyond just biology. Years of cultural, religious, or personal conditioning around intimacy and self-control can layer on feelings of guilt or shame. One of the most significant factors is something called post-orgasmic dysphoria, or PCD. This is the medical term for the emotional discomfort some men feel after climax, symptoms like irritability, anxiety, sadness, or even agitation. And it's surprisingly common. This isn't just about hormones. PCD may also involve how the brain and nervous system react to sudden chemical changes, particularly when those shifts aren't balanced by physical connection, emotional intimacy, or recovery time. For older men, this effect can be stronger because the body doesn't reset as quickly. Both dopamine and testosterone levels take longer to return to baseline. And the refractory period, the time it takes before a man can feel aroused again, also becomes longer with age. But there's more to it than just chemistry. A large number of men also experience guilt or shame after self-pleasure. This tends to be more common among men who were raised in environments where masturbation was treated as inappropriate or immoral. Even if those beliefs have faded consciously, the underlying emotions can persist and resurface in the moments after climax. When combined with the natural low that follows orgasm, emotional discomfort or self-criticism can intensify feelings of regret, disconnection, or emotional numbness. This is especially true for men who view their private habits as something they shouldn't need or who feel disappointed in themselves afterward, even when there's no real reason to be. Another important piece of the puzzle is dopamine desensitization, especially from regular pornography use or compulsive masturbation. When sexual stimulation becomes highly repetitive or overly reliant on high-intensity visual input, the brain's reward system can become less sensitive over time. So even when a man climaxes, the same amount of dopamine may no longer produce the same level of satisfaction or emotional lift. And when that dopamine quickly drops off as it does post-orgasm, the emotional crash can feel more intense. This effect is sometimes referred to as hedonic adaptation, the idea that the more often we stimulate a reward system, the less satisfying that stimulation becomes. Finally, there's the natural slowing that comes with age. Older men tend to experience longer recovery times after orgasm, not just in terms of sexual readiness, but brain chemistry as well. This means that after ejaculation, it may take longer for mood-regulating systems to restore balance. That doesn't mean anything is wrong, but it does mean the low feelings that follow climax may linger longer, especially if you're tired, stressed, or emotionally depleted to begin with. Now that we've covered the hormonal and emotional causes, let's turn to what the research says. The most comprehensive data we have comes from a 2019 study by Max Goyak and Schweitzer, published in the International Journal of Sexual Health. They surveyed hundreds of men about their post-orgasm experiences and found that 41% of men had experienced emotional discomfort after orgasm at least once in their lives. 20% had felt that way within the past month. Men described feelings of sadness, irritability, anxiety, and even emotional detachment immediately after climax. But for some, emotional history also plays a role. 
Studies on sexual guilt and religious conditioning, particularly those looking at older male populations, have shown a clear association between shame around self-pleasure and higher rates of depressive symptoms. In a 2018 review published in the Journal of Sex Research, men who held strong negative beliefs about masturbation were more likely to experience both guilt and low mood after climax. And while beliefs alone don't change chemistry, the emotional overlay can shape how those chemical changes are experienced. Now, while most emotional symptoms after climax are temporary and benign, there is a rare condition worth discussing, especially for men whose symptoms last several days or include physical discomfort. It's called post-orgasmic illness syndrome, POS. This is a medical condition where men experience a constellation of symptoms following ejaculation, including fatigue, flu-like body aches, concentration problems or brain fog, low mood or depression, irritability or anxiety, in some cases, even sinus congestion or muscle pain. The symptoms can start within minutes or hours after orgasm and last for anywhere between two to seven days. Though rare, POS has been documented in clinical literature for over a decade, and researchers believe it may involve an autoimmune or allergic-like response to a man's own seminal fluid. And while there's no universally accepted treatment yet, options such as antihistamines, SSRIs, or hormone modulation have shown benefit in some case reports. So let's go over what you can do to manage, reduce, or even prevent these post-orgasm mood dips. One, normalize the experience. First and foremost, understand that occasional low mood after climax is not abnormal, primarily the shift in hormones like prolactin and dopamine. When you can name what's happening, it's much easier to move through it calmly. Feeling a little emotionally off after orgasm doesn't mean you're depressed or doing anything wrong. It means your body is resetting and your nervous system is asking for a bit of time to recalibrate. Two, pay attention to frequency and patterns. If you're noticing a regular cycle of feeling emotionally low after self-pleasure, it may be helpful to adjust how often you engage in it. This isn't about abstaining or avoiding pleasure. It's about giving your brain and body a chance to fully recover between sessions. Spacing out the frequency can often reduce the intensity of the crash. Many men also find that when they're more intentional, rather than automatic, about their private habits, they feel more in control afterward and less emotionally drained. Three, limit overstimulation from pornography. This is an important and often overlooked piece. Frequent use of highly stimulating visual material can desensitize the brain's reward system. Over time, this makes natural pleasure feel less satisfying and may contribute to a bigger emotional drop-off afterward. If this resonates with you, consider taking a short break from visual stimulation and focusing instead on slower, more connected forms of pleasure, or even just stepping back for a few days. Many men report greater emotional clarity and steadier mood when they reduce overstimulation or support your post-orgasm recovery. After orgasm, your nervous system needs time to recalibrate. You can support this phase by doing simple things that help stabilize mood and boost dopamine gently. Take a short walk outside. Stretch or do light movement. Listen to calming music. Hydrate and avoid caffeine right after climax. Practice two to three minutes of slow, deep breathing. These small actions can make a noticeable difference in how quickly your body and mind return to a state of balance. 5. Gently reframe emotional habits. If you grew up with beliefs that labeled masturbation as shameful, it may help to reframe the experience with neutral or even positive language. This doesn't require changing your values, just noticing the emotional scripts that run in the background and asking whether they're still serving you today. Guilt and shame are powerful emotional amplifiers, and in the context of an already sensitive hormonal state, they can prolong sadness or regret unnecessarily. Some men find that simple journaling, speaking with a therapist, or having honest conversations with a physician about their private habits brings significant relief. Six, no one to seek medical evaluation. Most of the symptoms we've discussed are temporary and self-resolving, but if you find that, your low mood lasts more than a day you feel foggy, unmotivated, or physically unwell after climax. The emotional dip is interfering with sleep, relationships, or concentration. It may be time to speak with your provider. A urologist or hormone specialist can help rule out deeper issues, like hormonal imbalances, dopamine depletion, or in rare cases, post-orgasmic illness syndrome, POS. This isn't about pathologizing pleasure. 
It's about recognizing when something shifts from normal recovery into a pattern that may need support. And if you've had these concerns but haven't known how to bring them up with your doctor, you're not alone. This is one of the most common private topics men bring up once trust is established. Know that these conversations are safe, valid, and increasingly common in men's health. If you found this helpful, consider subscribing for more evidence-based guidance on men's health, aging, and hormone balance. And always remember, all information provided in this video and channel is for educational and informational purposes only. Always consult a medical professional about your specific circumstances and before making any changes to your lifestyle, diet, supplements, or medication. It's not common, but it is real. And the sooner it's evaluated, the sooner you can get relief or rule it out.